Deliver Us the Moon is a fairly short, story-driven science fiction puzzle game that I really, really enjoyed. Set a few decades in the future, the Earth's energy supply has just simply run out. But have no fear, those clever boffins have discovered that the moon is actually full of rocks that can provide us with all the energy we will ever need. So a moon base is set up, colonists installed, and energy is beamed back to Earth to power everything, and life goes on. Until one day, when the lights in Moon Base 1 just suddenly and mysteriously go out. The energy supply disappears and is turned off, and all hell breaks out on Earth, which then dries up into a dusty husk. So all chaos reigns for a few years, as there's no energy to power anything, and eventually enough resources are gathered to send a one-man or woman mission back to the moon to discover just what went on, and can we get the lights turned back on? Hi everyone, it's Mark here once again, bringing you my review this time of Deliver Us The Moon. And as with most of my reviews, you can watch my entire playthrough of the game at the link down below over on my second channel. Now, gameplay-wise, this is actually an interactive story with puzzle elements as well. In order to progress the story, you have to figure out how to get past whatever predicament is in front of you. It might just be activating some computers to open some doors, or it might be trying to figure out how to get through a zero-G environment, or somewhere where the life support's gone off and you have limited air, have to get some bits of power back on, have to get some air back on. There's basically lots of minor puzzle elements like this. None of the puzzles feel too difficult, and eventually you do work them out, although there is a little bit of tension on the time-limited sections where you're running out of oxygen pretty fast. But the story itself is pretty much set on rails. You don't really get any great input on how that's going to turn out. You just are there to discover what's happened and try and put things right. Fortunately, the story is pretty damn good. A lot of the puzzle elements are pretty basic, like switching around power sources to access one location whilst closing off another to get the item you need out of there to access the next location, etc, etc. And partway through the story, you do get this really cool hovering droid that follows you around, which reveals story elements of what's gone on in the past, and is also used to access locations that your character can't get to. It's quite a good mechanism, and I enjoyed the whole lot. None of the puzzles feel frustratingly difficult. Some will have you scratching your head momentarily, but they're all quite manageable and doable, apart from one that I really got stuck with and had to ask my stream chat to help out with. Graphics and sound in the game are absolutely excellent and very atmospheric. For example, I love the way sound differs depending on the environment that you're in. It echoes in space stations. It goes muted if you're out in a zero atmosphere area, for example. You can't hear the sounds from outside your own spacesuit. And there's a nice chilling soundtrack that follows you all the way through the story. And the graphics are also superb with excellent use of lighting in this. And the animation on the main character, it is very well done. I was very impressed with this. So then, on to my likes and dislikes about Deliver Us The Moon, and let's start with the story. I really, really like the story, which is kind of important in a story-driven game like this. It has twists and turns, it has moments where you just want to see what happens next. It has moments where you think you've worked out what's happened or what you're going to find up there, but then you're completely wrong and you're thrown a curveball, and I really like that. It kept me guessing all the way to the end because I really didn't know how things were going to turn out and just what we were going to find and whether there were any survivors or not. And I won't give any spoilers away here. There's also a really cool moment where you find out something about your character around about halfway through the game that, well, you might have realized it sooner, but I didn't. And it was one of those, oh, wow, really? Oh, that makes so much more sense now. And it's a really cool addition in there. And it's very nicely laid out. And something else that I enjoyed that goes alongside the story were the voiceovers and acting. They were all done very well, they were professionally recorded and presented, and I really like the voice acting and dialogue in this. How could they all be so goddamn selfish? What were they thinking? How can they be so... Warning. Tombo reactor failing. Now let's talk about the puzzle element of the game as well. This was something I enjoyed because I think they pitched it just right. The puzzles in this game mostly revolve around you having to figure out how to access the next area. And to access the next area, you've often got to overcome minor issues with accessing the areas immediately around you to unlock something or find something to let you progress. 
Now, these areas might be locked down due to power restraints, due to air supply restraints. You have a very limited air supply in your spacesuit, and in the areas where you go out of life support, you've got to be pretty quick on things. Fortunately, there's lots of little canisters of air left lying around. There are moments when you ask yourself, hang on, people have gone into space and their spacesuit only holds two minutes of air and they sell these little plug-in canisters that have like 30 seconds. Is this ridiculous? But you've got to remember, and I had to remind myself that this was a game mechanism put in there to enhance the tension, shall we say, during the puzzle elements to make you think and look at things a bit harder. There's a couple of times I ran out of air during the uh, some of the zero life support areas of the game, but it's no problem. You do die, but you just go back to the last checkpoint, and the idea is to get to the next checkpoint successfully, and then it saves, and it's, it's fine. But the most important thing about all these puzzles, I think they pitch them just right. They're not too hard, and they're not blatantly easy, so it just feels like you're clicking a button to progress, like I felt like I was doing in Call of Cthulhu, which is another story-driven game. Sometimes you really had to use your head. A lot of the issues in here is that you go in, into a, a space station where there's limited power. You'll have to switch around battery power sources and able to close one door and open another and figure out how the hell you get that thing out of there into the other thing to access the computer to climb the platform to open the door to get the power cell to plug that in to turn the life support on to go back here yeah <laughs> it's that sort of thing and there's a very much a sequence to having to do this and you can't really skip the sequence at all but it's all, I think, aimed at just the right level, and I really enjoyed it. There was one puzzle in the game that I really struggled with, and I, I couldn't figure out how to do at all. And someone in chat, because I was streaming this at the time, basically gave me an answer that they said had popped up in a conversation, which it might have done, and I might have missed the um, dialogue on screen that popped up. I might have overlooked this, and that helped. But uh, the rest of the time, no issues, and it felt quite satisfying slowly progressing and unlocking the next part of the story. And I think I mentioned it before in the graphics and sound section, but by God, does this game get the atmosphere just right. And no, that isn't a space pun. What I mean is it really feels like you're there in the environment due to the way it handles the graphics and the sounds. Like when you're jumping around on the moon's surface and the few chances you get to do that, it just feels like you're there you can feel the lack of gravity and impact you can feel the way the sound is different due to the lack of atmosphere on the moon and it's really good and also in the zero g sections when you're running around well not running around but floating around inside space stations and such areas that feels so so good because it's easy to get disorientated as you spin around you suddenly forget which way is up and down because you know, there is no up and down in space and where you came from. And I, I really like the way it's implemented. You really get immersed in it and feel like you're there, which means the panic and the terror is also there when you suddenly realize you're running out of air and you can't remember which escape hatch you came from to try and get back to or to the next zone where you're hoping there's going to be some more air waiting for you. Very well done. Very nice. And I really enjoyed this aspect of the game. And now on to a couple of minor dislikes. I really couldn't find much about this game that I didn't enjoy and didn't like. But there's two things I'm going to flag up. There were one or two details in the plot and the story that I think could have been answered better at the end. Now, it's possible that I missed something in the game as I was streaming it. That I missed a bit of dialogue or I missed a note on the screen somewhere which might have answered these for me. But I just... There was just a couple small details where I thought, yeah, but what happened to them and where did that go and did it answer that somewhere? I maybe missed it, but I felt like the game could maybe just answer a couple of things a bit better. About the main characters that you'll come across in the game, it pretty much covers those. Certainly the player character is, is absolutely fine. That story works out. Well, you'll see how it works out, but it's a good story. But I would have liked a little bit more detail at the end and I felt like it possibly could have gone on just a little bit longer the game to answer those it's a fairly short game anyway and the other issue that i might have with the game is replay value but remember this is like it's like watching a movie this game where you get to dictate the pace of the movie by solving the puzzles do you want to play through it again because we're like watching a movie it's not going to be any different to the next time you watch it you might pick up on a few different things and aspects that you didn't on the first viewing 
but basically it's going to be the same plot and the same story but you can't change that so do you want to play through it again i might play through it again but it's going to be like a year or two down the line when i've forgotten what i did to solve most of the puzzles in the game it's certainly good but i don't think it's got a huge amount of replay value but those are the only faults I can find with Deliver Us The Moon. I only found this game thanks to Microsoft Game Pass. I would have overlooked it otherwise, but it was there. I thought, yeah, it looks interesting. I'll give it a go. And I really enjoyed it, and I'm so glad I played it. I would highly recommend anyone else give this a go, especially if you've got Game Pass and are looking for a game to fill in these dark winter months. But overall, it was a really cool sci-fi adventure that I thoroughly enjoyed. And I would rate this a nice solid 8 out of 10. Just a really nice chilled out game to enjoy and get absorbed in. Oh, and don't forget, I live stream almost all the games that I come to review on this channel. And if you'd like to watch me live, then there's a link down below to my Twitch channel. And you can see the process I go through in making my mind up on whether a game is worth playing, as this one certainly is.